When you want to make an electronic circuit, there's one, say, golden rule, and it is every electronic circuit is as good as its power supply. I want to tell more about that in this video. Say, uh, this is a kind of demo circuit. Um, it's the classical a stable multi vibrator circuit made with a 555 chip in my case the NA555 and here is the schematic there's a lot to tell about such a, a simple chip not simple of course there are a lot of transistors here inside and the whole circuit is completely classical and this is the uh, circuit where I have derived the schematic. Uh, national semiconductors and of course on the World Wide Web there's a lot of information about the 555 chip. It was used for all kinds of purposes, uh, even purposes uh, for which it was not meant. As far as I know, and perhaps I'm wrong, uh, there was someone who making a kind of radio circuit with it, but anyway. This uh, schematic is visible everywhere on the World Wide Web. So, now again, my schematic that is completely copied out of that uh, National Semiconductor book. And I don't know, by the way, why they have mounted here a 10 nanofarad capacitor. Not sure. I tested it on the scope. This is a waveform that it gives out at the moment. Uh, it gives that out by uh, this capacitor. This is the um, frequency dependent capacitor in combination with this resistor, 120K, 120,000 ohms, etc, etc. So, here again the circuit, and I want to do a small demonstration about the properties. I have my purpose uh, used here, two potentiometers. Uh, sorry, one, yeah, yes, two potentiometers and two fixed value resistors here. And the node, the wiper, goes to pin 7. That is completely uh, confirmed, the classical circuit. And here also a 1 mega ohm potentiometer that parallels that 47k potentiometer and that gives a kind of fine tuning. Though that fine tuning is not perfect, I have to tell that, warn for that in a certain way. Uh, because you see say strange phenomenon when you turn that these two potentiometers anyway uh, I only mounted now one potentiometer it's here 47 K and I'm gonna turn it now to show the effects uh, by the way uh, the original idea of this video is to tell something about power supplies I will surely do that turn that potentiometer now so here you see what happens very strange oscillation stops suddenly oscillation starts again and you can see these bibbers has everything to do with the carbon layer of that potentiometer anyway I turn it now to the one side etc etc you can repeat this of course yourself and uh, I have say uh, had the idea to make this circuit for a 50 Hertz oscillator or 60 Hertz and I have already tested it and it worked quite nice but anyway there's much more to tell uh, at first when we are talking about such a simple circuit there must be a at least an oscillator that has to drive 50 Hertz, 60 Hertz on a precise frequency. The voltage must be stabilized. That's done here with that 7 
8812 uh, voltage stabilizer. And here you see, by the way, perhaps interesting to show, two capacitors of 100 nanofarad here and here, parallel to a high value uh, resistor, uh, say 220k here. And um, uh, that prevents this uh, 7812 uh, voltage stabilizer to start to oscillate, especially on long power lines. And here is uh, an electrolytic. When I have time enough, I will show the schematic. Here is a diode. The, the function of the diode is this. Uh, when you have an electronic circuit, with an uh, electrolytic capacitor of a high value, say 2000 microfarad or so, and the capacitor at the input of that uh, voltage stabilizer chip is smaller, it could be that when you switch off the power supply, that this uh, uh, electrolytic capacitor starts to discharge its, uh, its charge, to the, um, uh, the voltage regulator and to, that could, could uh, damage that voltage regulator. I'm not completely sure, perhaps uh, nowadays uh, there is a certain protection circuit inside that uh, regulator, but for say the most uh, effective protection I use here a diode so that when that uh, charge heaped up in the capacitor that serves the circuit cannot flow back into the regulator. So that's more or less the most important thing. So uh, schematic again. Only a first ID. I tr will try to work it out. And now we'll tell perhaps more about that about that uh, could be that my camera suddenly stops anyway. So when you have a uh, 7812 chip or 7815, 7808 uh, also exists voltage regulators. This goes to the minus in general. Here are the pin connections. This is the front, by the way. So this is the in, and here's the out. And then what I've told, uh, use here a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, bridge it with a high value resistor in the order of uh, uh, 220k to 470k and that means that say all kinds of oscillations cannot happen. This is the minus of course, here also minus. Uh, well. That's one important thing, of course, here that, uh, say, we have here a 40,700 microfarad capacitor, minus and positive here. Say we have here 18 volts or 24 volts, DC, of course, so this is positive. Um, I want to shift this a little bit, so, yes, this is positive. And then here that protection diode and here another capacitor and like I told say when this is 4700 microfarad uh, you don't have to worry when you make this capacitor smaller say 470 microfarad because there's no risk that the uh, current when you switch off the power supply that the current flows back into the regulator. Like I told, I'm not completely sure 
perhaps nowadays these regulators are protected in some kind of way but this is a silicon diode of course it gives a voltage drop in the order of 0.7 to 0.8 volts here positive etc and here is your stabilized 12 volt voltage uh, and a good idea is of course also to use here again a hundred nanofarad capacitor non-polar and bridge with a high value high value say 200k up to 470k resistor so uh, what I wanted to tell is that this is good practice uh, and uh, sometimes th there are some circuits where this does not want to work properly. For instance, uh, in a case of an, this is good for an audio amplifier or so or whatever. There are certain oscillators where this setup doesn't work uh, because, say, the um, complex here, the complex um, uh, situation of a capacitor, a resistor, etc. Uh, has an effect on the oscillation and it could be that the oscillator doesn't want to start to work. So, in such a case you can keep it very very simple. Here the DC input. Say 80 volts for that oscillator. I now draw a one phase rectifier but anyway doesn't matter much. This is minus, this is positive and could be that such an oscillator simple oscillator only needs this circuit to work properly one silicon diode say a thousand volt C diode and here for for instance um, a 470 microfarad capacitor and then you have of course here uh, say when you have here 18 volts uh, AC one phase recti recti uh, rectifying say you have here also 18 volts correct me if I'm wrong and uh, sometimes certain oscillators simple oscillators only want to work in this way You have to try and test it. Though this is um, say a situation that can happen in 20% uh, of the uh, cases when you want to make ele electronic circuits. That an oscillator only wants to work properly with such a simple power supply. In general this is the best ID. Thanks for watching. Show the circuit again. Yes, it's here. So again, here you see how it was made. Was that seven eight one two uh, voltage stabilizer? The diode, the electrolytic capacitor, etc., etc. Thanks for watching.